Did you know that the average home has over 2,000 feet of wire in it? Well, today we're in Athens, Georgia, and we're going to show you how electrical building wire is made. At the BICC General Watkinsville plant, they make two and a half million feet of Romex brand electrical wiring each day. That's enough to wire more than 1,200 new homes. It's a high-tech process that requires miles of copper rod. Machines that operate at speeds of more than 60 miles per hour. And a finished product that's expertly engineered to safely provide electrical currents throughout your home. Jim, this is a piece of house electrical wire. What are the ingredients that go into making it? Steve, when we make two conductor Romex brand wire, there's really three components. There's the black, hot, or phase wire. There's the uh, bare wire, which is a grounding wire. And then there's the white, which is the neutral. Um, let me show you some of the ingredients that go into it. On the, each of the uh, insulated wire, the first thing we do is we extrude or we melt PVC pellets. And we coat that later on in the process and put that around the wire. That's the insulation. That's the insulation. On top of that insulation, we put nylon on there. The nylon acts as a mechanical protective covering to the PVC. So that goes on the wire. When we're done with that, you can see there's paper that goes both around the uh, grounding wire and around the total product. That also acts as a mechanical barrier uh, from the jacket that goes onto the wire in the final stage. The jacket is also a PVC type material. Now where does the copper for the wire come from? Well, in our case, we buy copper rod in 5 16th pieces. Uh, it comes in coils that you see back there. and the. Uh, process is then we draw that wire down to, uh, to whatever gauge you may be using in the process. Yeah, a thinner size wire first. A thinner size wire, right. In order to make the wire thinner, the copper rod is fed into what's called a rod breakdown machine. When the copper enters the machine, it's 5 16ths of an inch in diameter. The machine then pulls the copper rod with extreme force, and it comes out the opposite end in the form of a 12 gauge wire only 80 thousandths of an inch in diameter. Jim, this is a large copper rod that we use to actually make the wire, but how do you control the size of the wire as it comes out of the die? We control the wire with this laser micrometer, and this machine actually takes a laser, reads the size of the wire, and allows us to adjust up or down in the process to meet the standard. The next process, you see the bare wire going in here and insulated wire coming out on the other side. That's why it's black. That's why it's black. We're melting the PVC that we talked about before at about 340 degrees and then coating the wire. That's the insulation. That's the insulation. Now this wire looks like uh, it's moving along here pretty good. Yeah, it's moving between 50 or 60 and 80 miles per hour. Now we come down here, we have another laser micrometer that measures how much of that PVC we're putting on. And from there, we go into a nylon extruder. This nylon extruder is then putting on this nylon covering, very thin coating, um, later on in the process. We go from that into a micrometer, which again measures how much nylon we've got on. The wire at that point, because the nylon's 560 degrees, has to be immediately cooled. So we cool it with water. The water, by the time it gets to the end of the line, will be down to about 100 degrees. The white wire is made on the same assembly line using the exact same process. They simply change the color of the PVC periodically throughout the day. After the wire is cooled, it's collected onto giant spools. Each spool can hold more than 34 miles of wire, and it only takes 25 minutes to fill a single spool. The spools are then moved to the second leg of the production line for the assembly of the Romex brand wire. Jim, you have a lot of wire flying through here. How do you make sure that there are no defects in the insulation? Steve, we use a sparker here. That instrument puts 4,000 kilovolts across each wire. So if there was a hole in the insulation, it would trigger the line to cut that wire out further down the line. So you got the three wires going into this paper folding machine here? Right, this is a paper accumulation system which allows us to change the paper in a continuous process. Now what's the paper do for us? Paper does two things. As the uh, jacket's put on, it keeps the jacket from melding the conductors together, as well as it provides some me mechanical protection for the wire. Now here, all three of these wires are coming together. Right, we're, right, we're getting ready for the jacketing operation. So you've got your That's white. That's the insulation, right? The insulation. 
You've got the white wire going in, the black wire going in. The grounding wire is going through a paper folder where the wire, the paper is folded around the wire. Then you have another folding device which actually folds paper around all three conductors in preparation for jacket. Goes through the extruder. That PVC is being melted at about 360 degrees. At which point the wire is moving down towards the end of the line. So this uh, PVC is the protective insulation. Yes, it is. Now, how fast is this moving? The line's running at about 1,500 feet a minute. We build up an awful lot of heat in the process, and so we've now got to start cooling down the wire. We do that again by putting water and cooled water on the wire as it moves down to the end of the line. The wire is then coiled, packaged, and sent to the job site where it will soon be installed inside the walls of your new house.